Welcome to this presentation of Williams Athletics. Flipped over to Teal. Teal along the baseline. Over the left center field fence, and it's one up on the Northeast Sports Network. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cole Field on the campus of Williams College in Williamstown, Massachusetts, as today, NSN, the Northeast Sports Network, brings you live coverage of the NESCAC Women's Soccer Championships. Today, we bring you an opening round match here on the pitch at Cole Field in Williamstown between the Eves of Williams College, the defending national champions, and the Camels of Connecticut College. Our producer today and cameraman as well is Martin Fillion. And with the play-by-play -play call, I'm Keith Harrington. And welcome into Cole Field, everyone. And a cold morning it is here in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Hopefully, wherever you're watching the game from, it is warmer. I'm pretty sure it probably is, unless you're on this part of the uh, United States map because it is a chilly one driving in here today. 38 degrees is what the temperature said on my car, but we should have a hot and hotly contested contest here, opening round of NESCAC playoffs, a one nothing win right here for the East on Cole Field during the regular season. So two teams that are pretty evenly matched. The East come in here as the number three seed. They have a record of eight, four and two. Overall, Connecticut College is 10 4 and 1 they are the sixth seed and as i said a one nothing win by the eves here earlier in the season when these two teams last met williams coming off a 19 1 and 4 season a year ago winning their third national title in four years second in a row the eves coming off a hard fought double overtime tie against middlebury in a rematch of last year's ncaa championship match Junior midfielder Victoria Leno leads the team in points and goals with 16 points and seven goals. The Eves boast a seven and one home record here at Cole Field. Connecticut College faces Williams after a two nothing loss to Wesleyan. Forwards Maya Johnson and Cat Norton account for half of all the points for the Camels this season, each having 18 on the season. The last time these two teams faced off, as I have already pointed out, the Eves came away with a one nothing win thanks to a second-half goal by Victoria Leno. So it should be a great one here today at Cole Field. Glad to have you along with us. It is a bright, sunny, cloudless Saturday morning here in Williamstown, albeit, as I said, on the cold side. Looking at the complete list of matchups, this is the only 11 a.m. start in the tournament, the time rearranged because, well, simply it's a busy day here at Williams College. Men's soccer at 2 o'clock. I'll have that game right here on NSN. The field hockey team is in action at home today. Uh, women's volleyball, regular season match um, at home today. A track and field, you name it, it's going on here in Williamstown. Thus, the 11 a.m. start to accommodate schedules here at Williams. So number one, Tufts at noon today is hosting number eight, Bowden. Number two, Middlebury at noon is hosting number seven, Wesleyan. And number four, Amherst and number five, Hamilton, slated to kick off at noon as well. So Williams, as you look at your screen in their home white uniforms with the purple lettering, the purple numbers, and the gold trim, the gold piping, as you can see there, around the white shorts, Connecticut College in the blue jerseys, the dark blue with the light blue sleeves, the white piping and the white lettering and numbers. And we're underway as Victoria Leno controls and drops the, ba the ball back to Sarah Kelly. And the first of four quarterfinals underway. Here's Norton. Norton spins, plays the ball out wide for the Camels. Emily Laurie played that ball ahead. Now Lori's going to drive one down toward the box area. Nakam Aregbalum gets the head on it, and she'll play it up past midfield, just out of the reach of Aspen Williams for the East. Or Aspen Pearson, excuse me, for Williams. Battle for control here at midfield. Erica Jung, the ball played back for Kelly. Kelly getting heavy pressure from Hannah Bolt. 
teams in that early stage of getting loosened up and getting the feel of the contest. Here's Bolt. Bolt will drop it back. Ball played down into the box area. Chelsea Taylor in goal there for Williams. Taylor, the sophomore from Westboro, Massachusetts. Ball played ahead for Pearson. The touch out wide in the direction of Jacqueline Nordhoff, but it goes out of bounds for a throw-in for Connecticut College where Marielle McEnany will put it in play for the Camels. Rain Condi battling there with Aaron O'Brien Powers for the Camels. Ball goes out of bounds for a throw-in here for Williams, and George Lord will put the ball in play for the Eves. Connecticut College looking to control. Maya Johnson, one of the two top scorers on this team, is going to play it ahead for Bolt. But it's a Regbulum turning on the afterburners and racing to that ball. Now plays it ahead for Leno. Leno out wide for Pearson. Pearson has it taken off her foot there by Zoe Stablarek. Here is Stablarek with the pass a little too out in front of her. Pearson, the intercept. Condi, the nice touch to Georgia Lord, but out to challenge Lord was Shannon Finnegan. Katie Pelletier gets her first touch for the Camels in goal today. And her punt out to midfield, 50-50 ball, battle for control. Here's Johnson. Johnson around a defender, that's Chapman. Plays it ahead for Bolt. Norton is racing in. A Regblum though, with a nice Clean tackle there to take the ball away, and East look for a counterattack opportunity, but it's broken up by Cat Norton. Now here's Pearson. Pearson plays the ball out wide for Lord. Lord racing onto it, places the ball far post. Pearson comes over to play it. Got over the outstretched hands of Pelletier. Leno, who's dangerous from that spot. Has it taken off her foot, but Sarah Kelly retrieves it. Makes the nice pass for Condi. Now Lord. Lord looks to clear some space. It was knocked down by Sarah Kogelman. Kogelman running some interference there. Here's Johnson with the takeaway of a Regbulum. Johnson in one-on-one. -on -one and decided to let it go with the early drive and sends it wide. And as you can see there, the hands up over her face saying, Maybe I should have taken that one in, or certainly she was wishing that she had a better foot on that shot as she was in a position to bring Chelsea Taylor off the line. Felt maybe the footsteps coming from behind and decided to let the ball go early. So Taylor with the goal kick over the head of Jung. Now Condi plays it out wide for Nordoff. Up the wing for... Georgia Lord. Eves looking to go on the attack. That pass too far in front. So Zoe Stablarek will clear it out of bounds for the Camels and a throw in coming up here for the Eves. Comes in for Condi. Eves look to organize and they're attacking third. Cleared out to midfield and will go out of bounds right at about the midfield stripe for a throw in which Georgia Lord will go over to take. Lord, the junior from nearby Manchester, Vermont, played high school soccer at Burn Burton Academy. Burn Burton football team with a huge upset of number one Middlebury in the state playoffs here last night. Centering pass for Pearson is going to be cleared away. Nice defensive play there by, it looks like, Shannon Finnegan. And a throw in coming up here. So Maya Johnson had the first early opportunity when she took the ball away from a regular just over midfield and had a chance to go in one on one. Here's Pearson, looks to play it out wide for Tolliver. The first year decides to take it to the corner of the box, takes it into the box. Looking to make something happen. Puts it straight across. Backside. A big save. Pelletier was there. 
nearly the one nothing lead, but a huge save by the junior from Topsfield, Massachusetts. A beautiful ball by Claire Tolliver to put that ball across. And a great opportunity for the East. And nothing done wrong by anybody there. A good shot and just a even better save by Katie Peltier. So both teams have had great opportunities here in the opening minutes. We're coming up on six and a half in. Ball played ahead by Emily Laurie. Leno tried to control it midfield. And now it's going to be Pearson. Here comes Kat Norton. Norton plays it through for Bolt. Sarah Kelly will fend her off of the ball and protect Chelsea Taylor. 50-50 ball. Goes all the way back to the back line where Finnegan comes up to play it. O'Brien Powers drops it back for Kogelman. Here comes Norton. Norton slides the ball through to Johnson. Played nicely there by Maria Chapman to break that attempt up. And Sarah Kelly plays the ball out over the sideline for a throw in for Connecticut College. And Maria Chapman has been such a stellar part of the defense of the Eves. Only a sophomore. She's from Boulder, Colorado. Has played such a key role. Here's a drive. And it's going to go up over the top off the foot of Aaron O'Brien Powers. But getting back to Maria Chapman since arriving on campus here in Williamstown. She has been outstanding for the East. Has nearly missed a minute of play back there on defense for Coach Michelin Pinard. So a goal kick here for the Eves. Shots on goal are two apiece at this point. Sarah Kelly with a challenge by Bolt. Here's Tolliver. Tolliver had pressure on her back there from Emily Laurie. Now here's Aspen Pearson. Pearson spins, drops it back for Sarah Kelly. Kelly plays it ahead for Rain Condi, but the intercept there by Stablarek. Stablarek has it taken off her foot by Leno after the tackle attempt by Jung. Now the ball played out wide. Lord comes up, tried the heel pass to Condi just a little bit behind. Ball played out wide by Tori Kretzmer. And over on the far wing is McEnany. No score. Not quite 10 minutes into this quarterfinal match here in Williamstown. The third seed East, the defending national champions. And Connecticut College with two more overall wins on the season. And the East holding that one nothing regular season win. Ball played ahead. The flag stays down. Here's Condi. Finnegan comes over to defend. And Condi, a victim of the somewhat slippery turf here, puts one harmlessly in on Katie Pelletier. We had a lot of rain here a couple of nights ago. It's been a relatively wet fall season here in the Northeast. Here's Tolliver. Tolliver challenged by O'Brien Powers, but comes away with it. She has Lord on her left. She'll slide it to Lord. Lord centers, deflected away. It was Stablarek that got the foot on it. Norton's going to send this one down in the direction of Johnson. Johnson with two defenders back with her, waiting for help. Nice job of fending off Chapman there until... The reinforcements got there. Norton tried to get one at the 18 and fired in. Here's Johnson deflected in front by Kelly. Here's Johnson again. A nice move, lets it rip and sends it wide. Good effort there by the Camels as it was Kat Norton and Maya Johnson, their top two scorers working together. Tori Kretzmer involved as well as they tried to create a nice opportunity and they did so. And they now take the advantage and shots on goal at 4-3. Once again, the goal kick from Chelsea Taylor. Leno got the head on it. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll be a throw-in coming up here for Connecticut College. 
and trotting over to take it will be Emily Laurie. Laurie on the throw in for Bolt, has Tolliver on her back. Those two battle. Now Leno for Tolliver. In the middle for Lord. Finnegan was there, but it took a bad skip. And here comes Condi, plays it through to Lord. The flag stays down. Lord and goal! And Williams has the one nothing lead. Georgia Lord with 33-38 to go in the half, and Williams leads it 1-0. It was played very nicely there by Condi and perfectly timed. The flag stayed down and Lord from Burn Burton Academy just up the road in Manchester, Vermont gives the Eves the one nil lead. So Lord from Rain Condi. And also, you know, a big part of that play, you know, Condi with the nice pass through and Lord with the finish, but also let us not forget how hard that Claire Tolliver worked back here on just the other side of midfield to play that ball alive and give the East that opportunity. So Georgia Lord at 33-38 to go here in the first half and the East have the one nil lead. Here's Bolt, beautiful pass for Johnson. Johnson's gonna let it go or Regulum got the boot on it a little bit and it changed directions and a credit to Chelsea Taylor for playing that ball well because that could have been dangerous the way it took the deflection off the boot of Nakemba Regblum. Here's McInerney, plays the ball down the line. Maria Chapman comes over to collect and she'll go back with it to Chelsea Taylor. And I think that's big. These two teams were knotted nil-nil at the half last time they played. And Victoria Leno won it for the East with a second half score. So to get that early lead has got to be very, very big for the East. It has to be a big confidence builder. But so far, as Kretzmer here tries to play the ball through, no signs of a letdown on the part of Connecticut College as they have huddled up and come up with some fire in their eyes since the Williams goal. Nordhoff, the centering pass for Condi. Aspen Pearson plays it out wide for Lord. Lord with the give back for Condi and coming over to defend there was Sarah Kogelman. And it's gonna go out of bounds for a goal kick for Connecticut College. If you're just joining us, one nil, Williams, Georgia Lord with the goal at the 33-38 to go mark off the beautiful pass from Rain Condi. Lord made a perfectly timed run. Condi put it right where it needed to be. And Lord put it past Katie Pelletier. Here's Jacqueline Nordhoff. Nice give and go there with Condi. McEnany back to defend. That pass finds no one but Connecticut College's Sarah Kogelman. Throw in coming up after it goes out off the Camels. Battle on the far sideline for possession. Went out of bounds off an Eve, so it'll be a throw in coming up here for Connecticut College. Here's Bolt. Bolt has it taken off her foot by Jung, but Cat Norton retrieves it for the Camels. A Regblum takes it off her foot, but Norton stays with it and gets it back and then tries to put it outside for Johnson. But it will go out of bounds for a throw in here. As we approach 15 minutes into this one. Should the seeds hold, the final four would be next weekend at Tufts. The Eves, if they want to be hosting next weekend, would have to see one and two both go down should they win today. Here's Bolt. Nice job there by Tolliver. And they're going to call a handball there. And we're going to have a set piece coming up for the Camels just outside the box in a really very advantageous position. 
But where it's setting now, it's in the box, but they're not going to kick it from there. It is going to be outside the box after the officials confer. The head referee goes over to the linesman on the right side here. So the Eves will start to plan their wall. We'll see how the Camels decide to play it. And now the referee will measure it off where to put the wall. The ball almost touching the top of the penalty box cannot be any closer. But I believe the correct call that it was placed outside. And I like the fact that they got together and discussed it and made sure they got it right. So it looks like Mario McEnany will be involved as well as Johnson and... Here's the shot, and a goal straight in. And we are tied at one. And it was Mario McEnany with 28.57 to go, and suddenly we are deadlocked. And a lot of the movement there on the part of the Camels was just strictly for distraction as McEnany, although she had other players there with her, with her decided to just go straight in and put a laser in the upper right-hand corner. And we are now tied at one. So a beautiful goal off the set piece, off the handball call. So discussion on whether it should be a penalty kick or should it be outside the box, just a direct kick from there. And it was ruled that it would be a direct kick outside the box, didn't matter. Same result for the Camels. And suddenly we are knotted up at one. The goal coming at the 28 57 to go mark. And this one's going to sail out of bounds off of the foot of Emily Laurie. So a throw in coming up here for Williams as Sarah Kelly will throw it in. She finds Tolliver. Tolliver does a nice job of using her body to shield off Laurie. Tolliver goes down. Laurie comes up with it. Looks to clear, but Sarah Kelly was there. Bolt tried the heel pass to Cat Norton, but it's going to go out of bounds for Williams' throw in. Sarah Kelly with the throw in for Tolliver, the quick touch. Finnegan comes over to clear it out. Now here's Cat Norton. Norton plays the ball out to midfield. Jacqueline Nordoff will chase it down for the Eves, and she's got room to carry it here. Ahead for Rain Condi, but she had it taken off her foot by Aaron O'Brien Powers. Stablarik carried it, had it taken away. Now here's Condi, nice touch outside for Pearson. Pearson clears some space, lets it go, the ball loose in front. But Pelletier, the second effort, able to get on top of it. A nice effort there by Aspen Pearson. Nice nifty footwork to clear some space and got a very nice shot off. And Pelletier has given up the one goal, but she's made two really, really tough saves here for the Camels. Here's Bolt. Leaves the ball off for O'Brien Powers, who sends it down the right wing for Norton. Sarah Kelly takes it away. Here's Leno. Plays it ahead for Rain Condi. Condi with a beautiful pass for Pearson. Kogelman comes over and has no choice with the pressure on her from Pearson but to play it off the end line. And a corner, our first corner opportunity of the day for either side coming here as we've gone under 26 and a half minutes to play in the half, tied at one. Georgia Lord, assisted by Rain Condi, gave the East the 1 0 lead and then the equalizer from Mario McEnany. Here's the corner kick. Headed away. I think that was Kogelman. Pearson tries to keep it alive. Leno heads it down in, and off her line comes Pelletier as Rain Condi was trying to get the shot off there, but. Pelletier making the right decision, coming off her line to play that one and plays it well. Here's Chapman. 
Nice job there of keeping that ball in play. Connecticut College switches fields with it over the top. Lori comes on to it, but Sarah Kelly is there. Sarah Kelly tried to clear, but Norton is going to send this one into the box for Johnson, but headed out by Nordhoff. Here's Johnson. Tries a slide one to Norton, but it's intercepted by Sarah Kelly. East looking to counterattack. Here's Leno out for Pearson. She has Georgia Lord running with her. Pearson letting the defense commit. Plays a beautiful ball through uh, just too far out in front of Lord and actually the flag up over on the far side. So it's an offsides call. That play was developing very similar to the Williams goal as it was Lord. Lord timed her run perfectly last time and this time just a little too ahead. So they play the ball back into the box where the offsides occurred about 10 yards back from where Connecticut College originally had placed it. Kogelman kicks it out to midfield. Here's a Regbulum. Pressure from Johnson and Bolt. Now Kelly. Kelly plays it out wide for Jacqueline Nordhoff. Tries to get it to Lord. A little too aggressive from behind there was Kogelman. So we're going to have a free kick coming up here for the Camels. As we've gone under 24 minutes to play in the half, we are tied at one in this NESCAC quarterfinal match. The highest seed remaining would host the final four. This ball driven down into the box. A Regblum gets the head on it. And that's going to be a jumping in call there on Kretzmer. And a free kick coming out here for the Eves. The Eves go quickly out to Nordoff on the right side. She tries to play it in the middle for Jung, but the intercept by Kretzmer. Counterattack opportunity coming here for the Camels. Kretzmer slides it off to Johnson, plays it over to the top for Bolt. Bolt defended well by Sarah Kelly, just could not get her feet set to be able to do anything with that ball. Credit to Kelly for the defense there. Leno plays this one ahead for Aspen Pearson. Now Lord. Lord makes a nice move to shed a defender. Here's Pearson with some room. Drops it off for Leno. And this is going to be a foul as Cat Norton came in aggressively and took Leno down. And so a set piece opportunity coming up for Williams. Let's see if they are as successful as Connecticut College was. Although this ball probably a good 10 or 12 yards out further than where Connecticut College launched their set piece. They equalized this one at one. Here's Leno and Pearson conversing about how to play this. A lot of people on that wall. Now Kogelman steps off of it. At one point there was six, close to seven players on that wall. Here's Pearson over the top of it. Leno's gonna let it go! And she put it in the corner for a goal! Victoria Leno. Well, I had just said, will they be as successful on their set piece as Connecticut College was, although be it about 10 or 12 yards further out, they were every bit as successful. And it's now 2-1 Williams. The goal comes with 21-48 to play in the half, unassisted by Victoria Leno. And both of those direct kicks, the one for McEnany for Connecticut College and that one by Leno, neither keeper. Chelsea Taylor for Williams or Katie Pelletier for Connecticut College had any chance. Both of those shots, the one by McEnany that equalized for Connecticut College and then that one by Leno, it would take an extraordinary effort by any goalkeeper to have stopped either one of those shots. Both were perfectly placed. And the East have the 2-1 lead back. 
So now Connecticut College with a little over 21 minutes left to try to equalize before halftime. We have got a great quarterfinal match going on here at Cole Field. Number three, Williams. Number six, Connecticut College. Separated by nearly a goal last time and, and a great one here. Substitution on for Connecticut College. Claire Williams, number 16, is in for the Camels. A foursome of substitutes getting ready to come in for Williams when they have the opportunity. Here's Nordoff, the first year. Drops this one back. Now Jung for a Regbulum. Nakama Regbulum plays it forward for Erica Jung. <laughs> Kelly races onto it. Nice play there by Maya Johnson. Johnson, just a first year out of Old Lyme, Connecticut. One of the leading scorers for this team along with Kat Norton. And boy, what a career for Connecticut College she has in front of her. Such a great freshman year. Nice takeaway there by Norton, but Regblum gets it back. Here's Jung with some space. Plays it for Pearson. Pearson, what will she do? She goes off to her right for Lord, but it was broken up there by McEnany. Ball played out of bounds, just to our left. Claire Tolliver will go down the field and let Sarah Kelly come on to throw it in. Although, substitutes coming in for Williams here. Looks like Liz Gervin is coming on. Also, Michaela Coppice. Emma Lynch is in. And I believe one more that we'll catch up with as soon as we get the opportunity. Throw in here for the East. Here's Coppice. Nice spin move to create some space around Lori. Sends it in the box. And Maya Johnson will clear. And a lot of hand grabbing by both players there. Connecticut College controls with Claire Williams. Plays it out wide for Norton. Chapman comes over to challenge. And we're going to have a foul. Is it going to be in the box or outside? And here's the clock being stopped. And a yellow card will be shown as well to Maria Chapman. Now we'll see if they call the foul in the box. It looks like. The, I first thought it was going to be a penalty kick based on the official stopping the clock. Evidently, he stopped the clock for the yellow card not the penalty kick. It looks like the call will be outside the box. By the way, the other substitute on for Williams is Allison Liu, number 16. So everybody waiting for a ball right now here with 19.01 to go in the half. 2-1 Williams. The ball played right on the corner of the box. Kretzmer will come over and talk with a teammate. Can't quite see the number. It might be Zoe Stablarek. I believe it is Stablarek, number four. It is. And so Stablarek's going to let this one go far post. It's going to go wide. Norton was racing onto it. Just couldn't quite get there before it went off the end touch line. So. A chance to equalize, unsuccessful for Connecticut College. So we come up on 18 and a half to play, 2-1 Williams. Both teams have scored off set pieces. The first goal, Georgia Lord converted a gorgeous feed from Rain Condi. And Sarah Kelly is going to pick up the foul here as Cat Norton goes down. And Connecticut College will have a set piece here, although from to the left of the goal and probably about 25, 30 yards out. Maya Johnson will come over as well as Stablarek and Kretzmer. They will discuss their strategy. 
Just a small two-person wall here, as you can see, for the Eves, Georgia Lord and Michaela Kappas on the wall. Johnson over the top, over the top as well. Kretzmer played toward the 18, where Leno gets the head on it, and Allison Liu plays the ball out wide for Liz Gervin. Here's Tolliver battling with Kogelman. Now Stablarek. Nice job there by O'Brien Powers to save that ball from going through. Played down the middle where Aregbalum gets the head on it. Kretzmer. Kretzmer with some space. Slides it in the direction of Johnson. Broken up by Sarah Kelly. It goes out of bounds for a throw in here for Connecticut College. Finnegan will leave it for Lori. Lori will throw it in for the Camels. Comes in for Johnson. They tag team up on her, and here's Georgia Lord. Lord pulls it back. Now Kelly. Michaela Kappas into the middle for Leno. Eves playing that possession game that they do so well. Ball played out wide here for Gervin. Lynch with the touch out to the wing area for Allison Liu. Liu has it taken off her foot. It will be a Williams throw in. 2 1 Williams here as we approach 16 minutes left in the half. The horn blows, but I think it was too late. No, we're going to get the substitutes on after all. Looks like Brianna Binder coming in, number 23 for the East. And also number 19, Tess Belknap. Belknap, another local product from nearby Arlington, Vermont. Here's Norton. Norton tried to make a move to clear some space, had it knocked away out of bounds. A throw in here, and Laurie will take it for the Camels. Comes in for Norton, drops it for Lori, plays it down the line for Johnson. Johnson wins the battle against Sarah Kelly, but Kelly retaliates and takes it away. That ball goes out of bounds. Throw in coming up here for the East. Finnegan had her hands all over Belknap. Centering pass, now played back. Here's Belknap. Has it taken away by Kretzmer, but recovered by Binder. Now broken up nicely there by Stablarek. 14 and a half to go in the half, 2-1 Williams. East took the one nil lead. About five minutes later, not quite five minutes later, Connecticut College equalizes on the direct kick just outside the box by Mariel McEnany. And then Victoria Leno with a direct kick of her own beats Pelletier. Here's Johnson, finds Norton. The top scoring duo for the Camels try to hook up again, but Aregbalum having nothing of it. Camels very aggressive here since falling behind. Both times, actually, that they've trailed in this match. They have not hung their heads whatsoever. As a matter of fact, they maybe have become even more motivated when they have fallen behind twice. Here's the outstanding first year. Johnson plays it back to Lori. Headed away. And we're going to have the foul here on Williams. Set piece. Coming up here, a busy day of NESCAC playoff action and regular season action here at Williams. Men's soccer, women's soccer, volleyball, track and field, you name it. Field hockey, it's happening here today. So as we approach 13 minutes, Stablarek and Lori have a conversation about how they'll decide to play this kick. 
Laurie will fan out to the right. Stablarek's going to send one into the center of the box. A scrum battle for it. And finally, cleared out. Claire Williams trying to keep it in. Drops it back for Kogelman, who sends one on goal wide. And it'll be a goal kick coming up for the Eves. Nine shots on goal for Connecticut College, six for Williams. But the Eves have cashed in twice. Georgia Lord and Victoria Leno both with goals. Taylor comes out. There, we've got our, our Dewey. We're looking to get our live stats up. Belknap couldn't get the head on that one. Stablarek plays it ahead. Kretzmer. Kretzmer sends it out wide for Claire Williams. Camels look to organize. Down 2 1. Maria Chapman who has a yellow card on the books. Comes out to play that one. Here's Lynch. Lynch is gonna let it go right on to Katie Pelletier. And the junior from Topsfield Mass easily handles that one, although it looked to be knuckling a bit in there. So it could have been a more dangerous ball than maybe it looked. Sarah Kelly controls now ahead for Lynch. Lynch, the first year from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Coppice tries to center one toward the top of the box. Kogelman was there. Sarah Kogelman. Two Kogelmans on the roster. Alyssa Kogelman and Sarah Kogelman, both from Gilderland, New York. Played over there for the Dutchman in the Suburban Council. Here's Sarah Kelly with a deep run. No one to contest. Finally broken up by O'Brien Powers. East though able to get it back. Here's Lynch. Lynch let one go from there before she hit the crossbar. Binder got the head on it. Lynch said, I almost scored from here last time. Let's try it again. And she was even closer on that attempt. Here's Belknap. Can't let it go. It was broken up. And now in and just wide. The Eves peppering the net with shots here in the final minutes of this first half. Peltier has been challenged and has been solid. Really, both goals for the Eves. Peltier had very little chance. Georgia Lord at close blank range. And then a perfectly placed shot from Victoria Leno. And on for Connecticut College is Mia Santana, number 14, making her first appearance. Throw in coming up here for Connecticut College. Here's Maya Johnson, the dangerous first year, looking to make something happen. Finds Stablarek. Stablarek has it taken off her foot by Allison Liu. Played out wide here for Gervin. But Gervin has it taken away by Stablarek. Counterattack coming here for Connecticut College. Here comes Kat Norton. Numbers favoring the Camels at this point. Ball slid through for Santana, but it's going to go wide off the end touchline for a goal kick. So an opportunity there for Connecticut College. They had the numbers. At one point, they had a four on three situation. But a goal kick coming up here. As we come down toward eight minutes to play in the opening half. 2-1, as you can see there on the scoreboard. The East led 1-0. Connecticut College used less than five minutes to get the equalizer. And then the East came back just over seven minutes later to regain the lead. Claire Williams 
Tried to attack that ball, but it was cleared out by Chapman. Here's Lynch. Off the pass from Leno. Lynch with some space. Plays the ball through. Allison Liu runs onto it, but off her line comes Pelletier. It's been a great one. Glad to have you along on a cold and a little bit breezy Saturday afternoon now, maybe. Maybe still morning. We started at 11. Yeah, it's still teetering between morning and afternoon for a few more minutes. On a busy day of college athletics here at Williams. NESCAC championships underway. The Eves hosting women's soccer, men's soccer, and field hockey, as well as, I believe, track and field today as well here at Williams. Here's Lynch. Has it taken off her foot there by O'Brien Powers. Under seven minutes to play in the half. Leno's gone the whole way for the East in that center mid spot and is responsible for the second goal that gave the East the lead. Gave them back the lead, I should say, as they led 1-0. Allison Liu with a beautiful move to clear Stablarek. Slides it ahead for Tess Belknap. Broken up there by Finnegan. Here's Stablarek. Heavy pressure from behind by Belknap. Plays the ball wide. Johnson with some room. Johnson with a run down the right side. Into the attacking third. Had it taken away there by Sarah Kelly. Here's Norton. And... Connecticut College fans thought there was a handball there. They'll play on. Here's Lynch. Lynch plays the ball wide for Binder. Binder runs onto it. She'll challenge Finnegan. She'll play the ball into the box where Brian Powers will clear. Michaela Coppice with space. It's going to launch one in. And Peltier made what looked to be off the foot to possibly be a dangerous ball. Look easy, the junior goalie. Fifty-fifty ball. And Claire Williams comes out of there with it. A two on one for Santana. Sarah Kelly recovers nicely for the Eves. Coppice back for Kelly. Eves dodge a bullet potentially there. Here's Finnegan. Lynch with Cat Norton providing the pressure, and Norton is going to be whistled for the takedown. And with under five minutes to play in the half, a restart play for the Eves, who lead 2-1 in this NESCAC quarterfinal matchup here at Coalfield in Williamstown. The number three seed, the number six seed. Should Tufts win today? They would host the final four. Middlebury would be next in line. Sarah Kelly launches this one toward the 18. Headed out by, looked like it was Johnson. Gervin controls a nice move to slip a defender. Is going to let one go. Paltier, the ball comes loose, and she pounces to cover it. Peltier will come out to putt one from the top of the box. Controlled by a regbulum. Maya Johnson steps in front. Now Gervin races toward it. Over there on the far side is Megan Dillon, the sophomore from San Anselmo, California, who is in for the Camels. Here's Johnson, challenged from behind by Lou. Belknap with some space. The youngster, the first year from Arlington, Vermont. Small time division four, but she's made it to get time here with the defending national champions after a fantastic career in high school. Leno, she's got a cannon. She loops that one in on Peltier, but Peltier handles it. Yeah, we were talking about Tess Belknap. I mean, Arlington plays in Division Four in Vermont. Vermont, a small state to begin with. Division Four is the smallest schools of the small, and they have a tremendous soccer tradition, tremendous soccer history. 
and she's been able to elevate all the way to this high level of play. Lori will let this one go off the end line for a goal kick with two and a half minutes to play. Substitutes coming on for both sides. Leno will finally get a well-deserved breather here. Coming on to replace her, it looks like it is Mirabai Dyson. Number 28, the first year from Los Angeles, California. Her first appearance. Multiple substitutes in for Connecticut College. And one of them right there with that touch, that's Alyssa Kogelman. Also in is Emily Angeli, number 15. Here's Belknap, makes a move around O'Brien Powers, plays it off the foot and sets up a corner kick for Williams. Michaela Coppice will go over to play it for the East with a minute and a half to play before the half in this Nescat quarterfinal. All the other quarterfinals getting set to kick off at noon. They'll play it short for Kelly. Kelly's gonna go far post with it and it's gonna go clean through for a goal kick for Connecticut College. Another player that subbed in over on the far side for Connecticut College. Might be 28, Taylor Douglas. Can't quite catch the number. 17 is also in for the Camels. Eden Sisson. And that is indeed Taylor Douglas over there, the first year from Windsor, Connecticut. Plays a ball down the line. Stablarek comes on to it. Nice footwork there to create some space. Let's one go, or Regbulum in front. Here's one looped in. Norton comes in. Well played ball there by Emily Angeli, the senior from South Kingstown, Rhode Island. A beautiful ball played in. And Kat Norton was coming on to it, but Chelsea Taylor there to make the play. Here's Dyson. Dyson pressured from behind by Sisson. Dyson will take it down to the corner. And the final seconds tick off here. And that's going to do it for the first half of play at Cole Field in Williamstown. Our score at halftime, Williams 2, Connecticut College 1. Opening round action from the NESCAC Women's Soccer Championships. The first of four games today as the other three will kick off at noon at their respective host sites. Recapping the scoring, Williams took the lead at the 38-38 to go mark, uh, excuse me, 33-38 to go mark. Georgia Lord from Burn Burton High School, Manchester, Vermont, is able to take an absolutely beautifully placed pass on a superbly timed run by Lord and Rain Condy with the nice touch on the pass and Laura was able to get it past Katie Peltier at the 33-38 uh, to go mark, uh, to go in the half, and it was one nothing Williams. Right back though came Connecticut College. It was Mariel McEnany with a direct kick just outside the box, and she buries it in the upper right-hand corner to get it past Chelsea Taylor. Just a perfectly placed ball. That tied it 1-1 under five minutes after the Eves had taken the lead, but the East come back seven minutes later off a direct kick from about 25 yards out. Victoria Leno with a beautiful strike into the upper right-hand corner. And the East took the 2-1 lead. And that's the way we stand at halftime in this quarterfinal. Shots on goal in the first half. Williams 12 and Connecticut College 10 saves 6 for Katie Pelletier, two for Chelsea Taylor. That's going to bring us to our halftime break here at Coalfield at Williamstown. Our score, Williams 2 and Connecticut College 1 in the NESCAC Women's Soccer quarterfinals. We'll step away and come back for the second half in just a little bit. Hope you all stay with us. It's going to be a great one. This is NSN.
you totally snuck up on me. I did not see you there. I'm just breaking in the cow suit. Uh, hello, my name is Jacqueline Simeone. I'm a senior captain on the women's soccer team, and I'm an economics major. I grew up in Milton, Massachusetts, and then I ended up going to a high school in Florida. It was a sports academy called IMG Academy. There I was basically told when I was 14 that I had to pick these 30 schools that I really wanted to go to. And Williams was always on that list. They were always like a top four, top three school for me. And my grandfather um, actually always wanted one of his kids to go to Williams. None of them ended up coming here, but him and my grandmother would always come to the Williams Inn and they spend their weekends here in the Berkshires and hang out and he had always hoped that one of them would go and I feel like I've fulfilled that. During my time at Williams, there hasn't been one single professor who's influenced me more than others, but I'd say as a whole, they just really inspire me. They bring these this like exuberance to class every single day and they have this great balance between being like super intellectual and great professors and also understanding that we're human and we make mistakes and stuff happens sometimes. So I'd say moving forward, they've inspired me to seek out companies that I respect and that motivate. Next year, I'm not sure exactly what I'll be doing yet, but I'm hoping to do some work in data analysis, maybe consulting, maybe sports marketing. I'm really all over the place, so I have no idea what's in store. <laughs> This cow suit actually means a lot to me and to my team. We started the tradition my freshman year when we made it to the final four, and then we wore them again when we made it my sophomore year and actually won the national championship. Growing up and playing youth soccer, subbing out usually meant that you messed up, you weren't working hard enough, and overall just the coach was mad at you. On our team, basically we get about like 20 to 25 players on the field per game which is absolutely unheard of. And a reason why this cow suit means so much to me, because we only make it to the final four because we are so deep, we're so dynamic, and overall we're, we're so happy for each other. Before each game, we sing Shipping Up to Boston along with some other songs, but Shipping Up gets us really excited, gets us in the mood to play. I was actually appointed to be one of the screamers last year by Gabs, who did an East Spotlight video last year. And now I am happy to say I'm lead screamer and I have some uh, protege under me who I'm training. a cow on this campus I do some other things as well I was in two plays I'm a part of the dance group NBC nothing but cuties we're all very cute I perform stand-up comedy I was a WCFM DJ radio host I was a junior advisor for a year and I'm the head of an organization called reclaim childhood for the soccer chapter so I thought I'd tell you a joke try not to laugh too hard where do dogs go when their tails fall off? No answer, no answer. The retail store. <laughs>
And welcome back to Coalfield in Williamstown. Keith Herrington along on the play-by-play -play call. Martin Fillion is our producer and cameraman. And we are at the NESCAC Women's Soccer quarterfinals. The first of four matches today going on around various host schools. And uh, we've got a good one going on here at Coalfield in Williamstown. The East, the number three seed with a narrow 2-1 lead over Connecticut College. Williams winning the regular season match by a score of 1-0. And this one has been equally as evenly played as the East scored early on. As they scored with 33-38 to go in the half. Georgia Lord on a beautifully timed run and an excellent pass from Rain Condi to put the Eves up 1-0. And then with 28-57 to go before halftime, it was Marielle McEnany with a direct kick from just outside the box, and she launched a rocket into the upper right-hand corner to beat Chelsea Taylor. It was just a superbly placed ball. Nothing that Taylor could do. And that was the equalizer for the Camels, making it 1-1. And then the Eves come back, a direct kick of their own. This one a little bit further out, about 25 yards out. And Victor uh, Victoria Leno, uh, another great strike, uh, put it right in the upper right-hand corner, beating Katie Pelletier, the goalie for Connecticut College. And really, Pelletier, uh, much like I said about Chelsea Taylor, having absolutely no chance, as it was just such a beautifully placed shot by Leno and that gave Williams the 2-1 lead and that's where we stand right now heading to the second half as both keepers have been challenged 12 shots on goal for Williams 10 for Connecticut College and Pelletier has had to make a couple of superb saves on shots that appeared to be scoring chances for Williams well they were scoring chances but appeared to be like they were going to be goals but Pelletier with a couple of big saves and the Eves have also had a shot by Emma Lynch ricochet off the crossbar that looked like it was destined to get to the back of the net. So Pelletier got a little help on that one. Other games getting ready to kick off here at noon. Well, they have kicked off. It's a little bit afternoon right now. Number one, Tufts is hosting number eight, Bowden. Number two, Middlebury is at home to number seven, Wesleyan. And number four, Amherst, hosting number five, Hamilton. Those games just kicking off. Uh, they've been going for just a few minutes here, and we're underway in the second half. Maria Chapman, who has to be a little bit careful, as she had a yellow card in the first half. And so she doesn't want to get a red. That would force Williams to play a player down. Here's Stablarek for Connecticut College. Now Nordhoff for the Eves. Aspen Pearson for Jung. Plays it out wide for Chapman. Chapman with Maya Johnson giving chase. A beautiful through ball onto the foot of Condi. Condi tries to place it in the center of the box. Ball deflected. Pearson tries to drop it back. And a shot. Tolliver right on. And Peltier challenged early less than a minute in. You could just tell the way that was pinballing around. That's what I call it. It's like a pinball just bouncing around in there. Nothing usually ever comes good out of that for the defense. And it ended up landing on the foot of Claire Tolliver, who got a beautiful shot off, but a nice save there by Peltier. Here's Chapman. Johnson comes on the challenge. Now Nordoff. McEnany, who has the goal, challenging Jacqueline there from behind. The ball goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw in here for the Eves. Chapman plays it off the head of Mario McEnany. Now Johnson with the touch, but there is a regular and they'll switch fields over to Kelly. Both teams substituted a lot late in the half. Looks like they've got their starters on here. Here's Tolliver around the defender. Centers it for Lord. Broken up as Kogelman was there for Connecticut College. So the East coming out aggressive here in this second half, knowing that a 3-1 advantage would be huge. McEnany clears this one out to midfield. Maria Chapman lets it roll by her. She'll race back to collect it. 
although I never coached at this level, it was at the high school and youth level, I used to always tell my teams in my coaching days that when it's a 2-1 game or really a one goal game of any kind of scoring combination at the half, in the second half, the first team to score really dictates how the second half's gonna go. As Lori with a nice defensive play there to take that one away from Tolliver, but Tolliver gets it back. Anytime it's a one goal game at the half, if the team who's up a goal scores and makes it a two goal lead, it really puts pressure on the team trailing. But of course, if the team trailing comes out and equalize it, uh, equalizes it, change complete complexion of the game. Nice give and go play there. Lord staying with it. Lori though clears it out of bounds for a Williams throw in, which will be handled over way across the far side by Claire Tolliver. Comes in for Lord. Tolliver into the center of the box, headed away by Kogelman. Leno slides the ball through. Finnegan comes over to challenge Georgia Lord. And I think that was last touch by Finnegan and we're gonna have a corner kick here. Have not been a lot of corner kicks in the match. Erica Jung will go over to take this one for Williams. Sarah Kelly offers a short kick. This one, outswinger. Tolliver tried to get the head on it. Lord races on. Again, a ball bouncing around and off the line. Uh, the defense came out to play it right back in and just wide. The Eves really pressuring the net and Katie Pelletier here early on multiple chances just off that corner kick but the defense up to the task i don't think it was peltier i think it was the defender that deflected out that first shot kogelman here's pearson pearson's going to send it right in peltier just decides to foot trap it now we'll pick it up as george lord provides token pressure Coming up on five minutes into this second half, 2-1 Williams, but we've had tons of excitement in this opening five minutes. Here's Johnson, now McEnany. Johnson has it taken off, a nice tackle there by Erica Jung. And it's gonna be a throw in for Connecticut College. It'll be handled by Mariel McEnany. Comes in for Johnson, but Nordoff got the foot in there. Now here comes Kretzmer. Kretzmer slides it to her right. Kat Norton's gonna let one rip and she scores! What a drive by Kat Norton! And she beats the outstretched Chelsea Taylor and we're tied at two. What a blast from Kat Norton. It comes with 39-29 to go and Connecticut College has equalized, and we're at 2-2. That was a blast by Norton. Chelsea Taylor did the best she absolutely could to try to save that, but that was just so well placed. Out of the four goals we've seen today, three of them, the goalkeepers have really had no chance on. Three of the four goals we've seen today have been perfectly struck balls. This is a great soccer game, folks. Two very, very evenly matched teams. And soccer sometimes can be a cruel game. The Eves came out in their first five minutes, fired off four shots on goal. Each one of them really a solid chance. But Pelletier and the Connecticut College defense was up to the task. And then Connecticut College in their first shot, their first opportunity, of this second 45 minutes, they cash it in on a, li a long drive from Cat Norton. Here's Pearson for Condi to Georgia Lord, but broken up by McEnany. She'll clear the ball out of bounds. A valiant effort by a couple of the fans trying to save it from going out into the softball field, trying to save the ball girl a little bit of work. But it eludes them. 
Here's Condi, now Jung plays it out wide for Jacqueline Nordoff, the outstanding first year. Takes it to the end touchline, McEnany provides the defense. And it's gonna go out of bounds for a Williams corner. Kat Norton, the junior from Hampton, Connecticut. Her and Maya Johnson have scored a bulk of the goals this year for the Camels. And that was Norton on just an outstanding blast to tie this one at two. The corner. It was Norton that cleared it out. Here's a Regblum. She's going to put one in. It was deflected and made it a difficult chance for Pelletier, but she's able to smother it. So tough play there for Katie Pelletier, but she was able to handle it nicely. We'll have the men's game, men's quarterfinals here at two across the way. Ball played up the midfield. Finnegan outraces Lord to it there. Now Lord able to get it back. Kretzmer tried to play it ahead, but Jung was there. Jung with some space. Plays it out wide for Aspen Pearson. Kogelman is there. She tries to send it out to McEnany, but it's too wide. It'll be a throw in coming up here for Williams. Pearson, Stablarek with the takeaway. She gets challenged by Nordoff. Goes out of bounds off Williams for a Connecticut College throw in. 36 and a half minutes to go. We're tied at two in this Nescat quarterfinal. Here's Maya Johnson. Kretzmer had it broken up by Leno. Pearson battles Stablarek. Pearson ends up going down as you saw there. No harm, no foul. Here's Pearson. Pearson's gonna send the ball to the reverse side of the field, which Lori runs onto for the Camels and she'll let it ride out of bounds for a throw in. A good challenge there by Condi, but the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be another throw in for Connecticut College. Eve's trying to pin it in there and try to organize offensively and get an opportunity to break this 2-2 tie. Finnegan's going to clear one out toward midfield. It's going to be picked up there by Sarah Kelly. Nice job there by Tolliver. Tolliver plays it forward. Norton got the foot on it. Here's Kretzmer out to midfield where it's picked up by a Regblum. Sends it wide for Nordoff, drops it back for Maria Chapman. Chapman will carry. Plays it in the direction of Lord, but Kogelman is there. Here's Maya Johnson. She's going to be taken down by Jung, and that's going to be a foul. Jung with the good sportsmanship. Goes over and helps up Johnson, the first year, who's had such an outstanding first season for Connecticut College. One of the two leading scorers along with Cat Norton. And this has been a seesaw battle, folks. Lord gave Williams the 1-0 lead. McEnany tied it for Connecticut College. And then before halftime, Leno gives the East the 2-1 edge before Cat Norton ties it. We're tied at two. Nescat quarterfinals. The winner to the semifinals next weekend which would be hosted by Tufts should Tufts win as the top seed today. Middlebury would be next in line. And this one goes through into the box. Off her line comes Chelsea Taylor. The punt out to midfield. 50-50 ball. Jung will control, plays it for Leno, wants to go wide, 
for Tolliver, but too far wide as Finnegan picks it up for the Camels. Connecticut College looks to organize. Ball played out to near midfield. Sarah Kelly collects it there. Condi and O'Brien Powers get together. This has been a back and forth exciting battle. Eves have twice had one goal leads, twice Connecticut College has been able to equalize. Here's Nordoff. Looking to make a move on McEnany, clear some space, backside post. Condi coming on, just couldn't quite get the head on it. Eves still on the attack. Here's Aspen Pearson. Taken away and cleared out by Cat Norton. Chelsea Taylor way off her line, way out of the box, comes out to play it. And no immediate danger. Here's Chapman. Now Nordhoff. McEnany provides the defense. Erica Jung. Irregulum reverses fields for Sarah Kelly. Ahead for Aspen Pearson. Pearson drops it for Condi. Condi's going to send it in right on Pelletier. An easy save there for Katie Pelletier. 18 shots on goal for Williams. Six in this half. 11 for Connecticut College. Only one in the second half, but it's the one that counted. Cat Norton getting the equalizer with it as we are at 2-2. Ball played back to Taylor. Taylor ahead where Condi gets it at midfield. Stablarek takes her down. Now Kretzmer, the official says play on. Here's Johnson. Johnson tries to hook one in, but up over the top. And it'll be a goal kick coming up for Williams with coming up on 31 minutes left of this NESCAT quarterfinal tied at two here at Coalfield in Williamstown. And we'll have the men's game from Williams coming up at around two o'clock here. Lots of action as the NESCAC championships getting underway in several sports this weekend. NSN, proud to be part of the NESCAC championships. Here's Jung, plays it up the wing. Beautiful pass by Jung. Condi runs onto it. Stablarek back to defend. Condi finds Lord. Kogelman, nice recovery and clears the ball out. Beautiful play there by Kogelman. Chapman toward the 18. Norton, who got the tying goal, comes onto it for Connecticut College. Nice play by a Regulum across to Sarah Kelly. Here's Kelly off to her left for the always dangerous Victoria Leno. Here's Norton. Plays it back for Finnegan who clears to midfield. Kelly gets the head on it there for Williams. Kretzmer with the touch. Now Nordhoff. Jung. Pearson. With O'Brien Powers. McEnany looked to clear, but Jacqueline Nordhoff was right there. And it's going to be a throw in for the Camels. We've gone under 30 minutes to play in this NESCAT quarterfinal. We are tied at two, number three, Williams, and number six, Connecticut College. And it's been an outstanding match. Throw in, Maria Chapman there for the Eves, finds Leno. Now Pearson, Pearson with some space, puts it out wide. Finnegan races onto it for the Camels and now clears it out of bounds. Substitutes coming on for both sides. Coming on for Connecticut College is Claire Williams, the first year from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. And Allison Liu is on for Williams. 
and Emma Lynch. So early substitutions here for both squads. After subbing later in the first half and then starting the regular starters here to start the second half. Here's a reg balloon with a nice run. Headed away by Kogelman. Played out wide for Jacqueline Nordoff. She's got room. Brings it in. Finds Lynch. Stablarik was there to break it up and now cleared out. Eves doing a great job since Connecticut College equalized. The Eves have been holding the ball on their attacking third pretty much the entire time since Connecticut College scored. Here's Tolliver. Tolliver racing toward the box. Some nice footwork. Let's one go. Nordoff on the backside. Could not get there. We almost had first year to first year. But it's out of bounds off Connecticut College, so a corner coming up here for Williams. It looks like Jacqueline Nordhoff will serve it. She was shielding the sun, looking across to see if maybe somebody else would play it. She'll go short here to Maria Chapman. Chapman's going to put one in toward Pelletier off her line. Nordhoff puts it right back in, deflected. Out top for Lynch. Sarah Kelly's going to let one go, and it's going to sail high for a goal kick coming up for Connecticut College. But once again, heavy pressure from Williams. They now have 20 shots on goal. Their eighth shot on goal of the half. Connecticut College with 11 shots, only one in the half. But what a shot it was. The equalizing goal from Cat Norton. And McEnany is going to have to go off. A little bit shaken up, evidently. And she'll be replaced over here defensively by Megan Dillon, the sophomore from San Anselmo, California. And it looks like Michaela Kappas getting ready to come on, replacing Claire Tolliver for Williams. So with 26, 27 to go, tied at two, we restart off the goal kick from Katie Pelletier. Eves have twice had a one goal lead and twice Connecticut College has been able to equalize. Should the game end up tied after regulation, it would go to golden goal, extra period, extra periods potentially. Corner kick coming up here for Williams. Of course, if it's not settled after overtime, it would go to penalty kicks. We saw last year's championship game go to penalty kicks in the NESCAC final between Middlebury and Williams last year and the national championship, the same thing. The corner kick into the middle of the box and cleared out. Regbalum chases it down. Maya Johnson heading back for Connecticut College. Stablarik clears it up. The skip head for Kretzmer. It's a foot race. Regbalum wins that race. Plays it back to Chelsea Taylor. She'll look to reverse fields. Here's Sarah Kelly with space. Ahead for Lynch. Lynch carries it across midfield. She has lots of room. Still able to carry it. Finally, a challenge from Cat Norton. Allison Liu to the top of the box for Lynch. Lynch lets it go, and Pelletier is there. Lynch had two great chances in the first half, one that hit the crossbar and one that Pelletier made a nice save on. So she certainly capable of finding the back of the net from that area. Here's Johnson. Johnson had Claire Williams with her, had it taken away there by Leno. Here's Kretzmer, now Leno gets it back. 
Leno trying to lead the charge, plays it out wide for Lord. Kogelman over to defend. Lord takes it into the box, beats the defender, slides it across, backside post. Nobody home except the defense of Lori. Here's a drive from Lynch. Lynch has gotten some fantastic shots off today in the first year. From Weymouth, Massachusetts. That's about her fourth really, really solid shot. 22nd shot for Williams. They've now doubled the shots for Connecticut College. And they've put 10 shots up to one for the Camels here in the second half. But the one for the Camels, as I pointed out, earned them the 2-2 tie. Here's Chapman. Played out to midfield, a reg one. Claire Williams comes on to her. Lynch plays it out wide for Sarah Kelly. Kelly, the offensive-minded defender, slides one out wide. It's going to go off the end touchline for a goal kick. We've gone under 23 minutes left in this one, tied at two. NESCAT quarterfinal, number three, Williams, number six, Connecticut College. A 1-0 win in the regular season for the Eves, and this one has been equally as closely contested, albeit with more offense. Nordoff challenged by Dillon. Now Cat Norton. Plays it out wide. Down the line it goes for Kretzmer. Kretzmer with a regulum coming on. A nice move to clear the defender. Here's Kretzner. But it's going to be kicked away by Sarah Kelly. But a nice run there by Tori Kretzmer, the junior from Glastonbury, Connecticut. The throw in here from Dillon. She's going to send one toward the box where a regulum gets the head on it. Nice play to keep it alive there by Kretzmer. Here's Lynch, she's had a fantastic game today. The first year, beautiful move by Leno. Leno slides it wide for another first year. That's Jacqueline Nordoff for Condi. The touch outside for Lord. And Lord just did not get the foot on that one that she wanted. She knew it as soon as she struck it. And Katie Pelletier comes off her line to play it with 21 and a half to go. More substitutes getting ready to come in for Williams. One of them looks like Brianna Binder. Also looks like maybe Liz Gervin as well. Down the line. Lori overlapping there, came onto it, but it was cleared away by Eregblum. Looks like Santana coming on here for Connecticut College. Mia Santana, the senior from New London, Connecticut. Replacing... Tori Kretzmer, and Liz Gervin and Brianna Binder also on here for Williams. This ball harmlessly behind the net. So a goal kick coming up here. Coming up on 20 minutes to go in this match, 2-2. The winner advancing to the NASCAC semifinals next weekend right now would be set to be hosted by Tufts. But of course, it's going to depend on results of other games. The Jumbos, the number one seed. Middlebury, number two. So they would be the first two in line to host if they both get through. And it would be Tufts, of course, should the Jumbos get through. Stablarek puts it out wide. Sarah Kelly, nice job by Michaela Coppes, saving that from going out of bounds. Eves trying to get organized offensively here to make an attack. Here's Lynch, pass though intercepted there. Maya Johnson races on to Aregbalum. Johnson will control, and Aregbalum knocks it out of bounds, gives her defense a chance to come back and recover. And a throw in here for Connecticut College with 19-20 to play, tied at two. This one in the box. Chelsea Taylor comes out, easily plays that one, and is going to roll it out quickly. 
Leno looking to lead a quick counterattack for Williams. Plays it out wide for Gervin. Gervin runs onto it. Stablarek back defensively. Gervin toward the box. And a whistle. And a set piece coming up for Williams just outside the box, just to the left of Katie Paltier. So a big moment here with 18.40 to play, tied at two. Camels setting up their wall. It'll be a three-person wall with Williams, Norton, and Stublarek. Paltier directing traffic. It looks like Gervin will strike it for Williams. She'll put it right in. It was deflected off the wall and goes, I thought it was deflected off the wall, but it's going to be a goal kick. So evidently it went straight up and over. So a good chance for the East. Goes by the wayside. And a goal kick coming up here for Connecticut College. 18 minutes to play in this NESCAC quarterfinal, tied at two. Such a competitive conference, the NESCAC. So many games closely contested. You know, you have eight teams in this playoff, and you have to seed them for tournament purposes, but one through eight capable of winning it all. And we've seen it happen before, more so in the men a lot of times than the women, but certainly in any NESCAC tournament, the competition is stellar and tightly contested. Here's Johnson. Johnson with a nice move. He's going to launch one here. Taylor easily handles that one. She's going to play it out quickly for Leno, trying to go on another counterattack. Here comes Leno. Leno with space to work. Allison Lewis to her left. Binder is straight ahead. Leno still going. Let's one go. Finnegan gets in front. Ball cleared out. Here's Sarah Kelly out racing Santana to it. Kelly is going to drive one into the box. Lou coming on. Pelletier off her line. The flag is up. It'll be off sides. So a free kick coming up here for the Camels with 16 40 to play. Martin and I were talking during halftime that I might have a little break in between games. It may not happen that way. <laughs> we're headed for extra time at this point. Matter of fact, I think the way I said it was, should have plenty of time in between games unless we have overtime and PKs. And here we are knotted at two. I think I forgot to knock on the wood of the table here. That was probably the cause. Here's Allison Liu. Liu's going to let one go. Pelletier smothers it with another big save. She has been tested time and time again. 23 shots for Williams, 11 and a half, and she has answered the call. Katie is a junior from Topsfield, Massachusetts. Stablarek. Plays it ahead. Claire Williams, the touch for Cat Norton. Norton plays it down the middle of the box. Williams racing onto it. Maria Chapman there to run interference between the attacker and Chelsea Taylor. Here's Leno. Slides the ball through for Allison Liu. Liu plays it out wide for the overlapping Nordoff. Dylan back to play defense. Here's Nordoff toward the end line, able to keep it in. It's still loose in front, and Pelletier gets on top. A dangerous ball. Pelletier able to pounce on top of it with 15 minutes left to play. The punt out to midfield. Sarah Kelly, the first touch. Santana gets the head on it there. Now, I think that was... O'Brien Powers, O'Brien Powers out of Portland, Oregon. Here's a Regblum, now Kelly. Kelly plays it ahead for Lou. Norton battling with Leno. Norton wins that battle, comes away with it, drops it back for Dylan. 
Leno, though, able to outrace Claire Williams to that one and get it back for the East. Here's Gervin, taken away by Stablarek. Stablarek starts a run. Now Santana plays the ball out wide. Broken up by Michaela Kappas. Here's Lynch. She's had a solid game today, the first year. Has played very well. Gervin with the touch wide. And a throw in upcoming with 13 and a half to play. Many substitutions back on. Aspen Pearson, Rain Condi, Georgia Lord, Claire Tolliver all back onto the pitch. For Williams. In for Connecticut College is number 17, Eden Sisson. Here's Lord, Finnegan on her back. Plays it out for Tolliver. Maya Johnson almost the intercept. Tolliver breaks free and contact, and it's going to be a direct kick and thought maybe the uh, clock was going to, oh yeah, it is going to be stopped for a card. Looks like Tolliver disagreeing and she'll be shown the yellow card. So a free kick coming up for Connecticut College with 12.48 to play, tied at two. NESCAT quarterfinals. The defending national champs in a battle here with Connecticut College. Williams 8-4 and 2. Connecticut College 10-4 and 1. But the Eves with the better mark in the conference, earning the third seed in the home game here. And they have had their hands full here with the Camels. Here's Condi. Condi somehow able to sneak through. Here's Pearson going to lob one in. It's loose, and Pelletier, as she goes down, has it land in her hands. What a play by Katie Pelletier. She made the save, and as she was falling to the ground, the ball popped up and came right into her lap. Here's Norton. Norton. Starts a rare run into the attacking third for Connecticut College in this half. Around a defender. Broken up by Nakem Aregbalum. Norton had it in her mind to give her team their first lead. But denied by Aregbalum. Norton has one of the goals. This one lofted into the box. Over the top of everybody. Dylan's going to put it in. Easy chance for Taylor. Here comes the Eves on the attack. Lynch with space around the defender. Slides it through for Lord. Nicely played over there by Stablarek. Here comes a chance on the counterattack for Connecticut College. Johnson, but a Regbalum takes it off her foot. Tolliver, and it's going to go out of bounds for a throw in for the Camels. We go under 11 minutes to play, tied at two in this quarterfinal match of the NESCAC Conference Championships. Dangerous call there on the East. A free kick opportunity coming up for Connecticut College. Just over midfield as we approach 10 minutes left in this one. Georgia Lord, Victoria Leno with goals for Williams, Kat Norton, and Marielle McEnany with goals for Connecticut College. It was 2-1 at halftime. And then early in the second half, Kat Norton with a long drive to equalize for Connecticut College. Three of the four goals have been long drives perfectly placed and then Lord converting right in front off a beautiful pass from Rain Condi 
That was the first goal of the contest. Dillon. Pearson. Pearson controls. Under 10 minutes to play now. Lou wanted to go to Lynch, but it was broken up there by Cat Norton. Tolliver converges on the ball there with Sisson. Here's Leno, dangerous from any place on the pitch. As is Norton for Connecticut College, as we've seen. Here's Chapman, plays it ahead for Condi. Lynch, the first year, back to Chapman. Now a Regbulum. Eves trying to pull back and organize here. Gervin plays that one ahead, but broken up. Here's Lynch. Lynch to Condi. Condi in toward the 18. Still going. Broken up there by Finnegan. Tolliver's going to let one go, but let it go wide. The first five minutes of the second half were huge in this match because the Eves had several opportunities right out of the gate in the second half and Katie Pelletier and the Connecticut College defense was able to fend off every one of them and then the one shot and they've still only got three and a half that Connecticut College had during that time Cat Norton scored from deep a perfectly placed ball to tie it at two. So we've got an injury timeout here. The other matchups today, number one, Tufts, is at home as they are hosting number eight, Bowden, number two, Middlebury, hosting number seven, Wesleyan, and number four, Amherst, is at home for number five, Hamilton. See if we can uh, maybe get some other scores. From around the playoffs. While we have the opportunity. See if anybody has uh, scored yet here in any of the matches. Oh, we're going to be back to play, it looks like, before I <laughs> get the chance. Still working on it. Fingers not working as quickly. <laughs> Here we are. Women's Soccer Championships. See if we can get the scoreboard up. like that was last year's scores <laughs> so haven't been able to quite get the scoreboard up there for you and now we're back to the action so let's worry about the action at hand here's Johnson Maria Chapman plays the ball out wide for Pearson. Kogelman. Both teams trying to get settled in after the injury timeout. Here's a reg -bullum. Take away by Williams off the errant pass. Connecticut College looks to attack. Johnson has it poked away by Leno, now Lord. 
Off her line comes Katie Pelletier. Pelletier punts it out to midfield. And it goes out of bounds off of Aspen Pearson. So the throw in with seven minutes remaining here for Connecticut College by Megan Dillon. Comes in for Bolt. Taken away by Lynch. Now Chapman. Or Regbulum plays it up to midfield. Controlled by Aaron O'Brien Powers. Plays it back to Kogelman. Ahead for Bolt. Goes over the head of Chapman here. Bolt will give her a chase, but it will be played back to Taylor. Taylor plays it out wide for Chapman. Now Lynch. Challenged by Claire Williams. Collected by Condi. Leno for Tolliver. The first year. Spins. Makes a nice run. Here come the Eves. Tolliver into the box. Let's it go. The save. It's still loose in front. Tolliver tried to get a second shot on it, but couldn't quite get there. Cleared away. Now Leno for Lord. And Lord sends this one in wide. Six minutes to play. A great opportunity. Another big save for Katie Pelletier. Looks like Jacqueline Nordoff coming back on for the East, replacing Claire Tolliver who just had that wonderful chance, but denied by Pelletier. This one's gonna go out of bounds for a throw in for Connecticut College with five and a half to play. Nordoff gets the head on it. Megan Dillon plays it down. Bolt plays it through for Williams. She has Sis in there overlapping with her. And it's going to be poked away out of bounds. The throw in here for Megan Dillon. Comes in for Johnson. Taken off her foot by Lynch. Chapman looks to clear. Picked up, though, by Sisson into the box. Johnson plays it across the box. Leno the clear. Claire Williams, a move. Tried to let it go, but a regbulum in front. Out to midfield for Lord. Her and Pearson battle Kogelman. Now here's Lord. Lord, past the defense and down. And it's going to be a set piece coming up for the East with just over four minutes to play. Expect to see Leno or Pearson maybe strike this one. And the official moving it back from where the ball was to get it to the spot of the foul. Here's Pearson, the wall in front of her, Pearson. And I think she was trying to angle it far post. Looks like her cleat got caught up in the turf. A lot of rain in the area this week and a little bit on the muddy side. And it looks like maybe she just got her cleat caught up there. Allison Liu comes back on, replacing Rain Condi with just under three and a half to play, tied at two. Pelletier. Nordhoff. Keeps it in bounds. Here's Bolt. Bolt plays it down the middle for Sisson. But Chapman there to take it away. Here's Leno. Now Sarah Kelly. Kelly around Johnson. Puts it up the middle of the field for Lynch. Lynch has had many good chances. Will she create another? Takes it to the top of the box. A move around the defender. And finally cleared away by Sisson. Lofted toward the 18. O'Brien Powers was there. Time getting short in regulation. Two and a half to play. 
Megan Dillon clears it out to midfield. Here's Johnson. Johnson with Bolt with her. Johnson carries it in, makes the move on a regulum. Nice recovery, though, back defensively by Sarah Kelly. Into the box, takes a skip and a hop. Bolt couldn't settle it, and it's cleared away by Maria Chapman. Here's Dillon for Bolt. Taken off her foot by Maria Chapman. Two minutes to play, tied at two in the NESCAC quarterfinals here in Williamstown. Connecticut College giving the national champions from a year ago all they want here this afternoon. Here's Nordhoff. Clears it out toward midfield. Georgia Lord comes on to it. Kogelman is right there. They battle. Kogelman comes away with it. She tried to center one, but Lynch got in the way. Here's Lord with under a minute and a half to play. Sends it down to the corner. Stabarek is there. Plays it out to Dillon, but it's going to be out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Williams with just over a minute to play. Nordhoff. Surveying the situation, comes in for Pearson. Pearson strikes one toward the box. Lou was coming on, but it was headed away by Finnegan. One minute to play. Here's Gervin. Lynch, Lynch strikes one. Pelletier is there for the save. Lynch with some great chances today. Has played perhaps... The best game of her freshman year. And has been rewarded by staying out there by Coach Pennard for her fine play. 30 seconds left. Here's Nordhoff. Plays one out toward the corner for Pearson. Stablarek Stablarek comes on defensively. Pearson beats a defender. Races in with 17 seconds to play. Far side post. And it's going to be cleared out. And we're heading toward overtime, it appears. This one into the box. Pearson tried to heal it. Pelletier off her line as time expires in regulation. And we're going to go to overtime, tied 2-2. I'll take a quick break here. And then after I catch my breath, we'll be back. With the overtime session, this is NSN.
Welcome back to Cole Field here in Williamstown. We go to overtime tied at two in the NESCAC quarterfinals. Number three, Williams, and number six, Connecticut College. Looking at the other games that are being played right now around the NESCAC Conference Tournament. Middlebury leads Wesleyan 1-0 over in Middlebury. It is Bowden and Tufts tied at nothing nothing. Hamilton and Amherst are also tied at nothing nothing. So Middlebury, the only team in another game that's managed to find the back of the net and grab a lead so far as both the other games are tied. And so we get ready to go to overtime. Two 10 minute overtimes to start, but it's golden goal. So a goal ends it and advances somebody on. Should nobody score in the two 10 minute extra sessions, then we would go to penalty kicks is my understanding. Georgia Lord, a goal to give Williams the one nothing lead. Mario McEnany tied it in the first half for Connecticut College. Eves took the 2-1 lead at halftime on a Victoria Leno goal. And then it was Cat Norton tying it early in the second half, just a little bit over five minutes in to make it 2-2. And now we go to overtime, tied at two. The winner advancing to the NESCAC semifinals, which would be held at Tufts, should Tufts win today, but they are in a nothing-nothing game right now at last check. So, Connecticut College, Maya Johnson will strike it to start things in the second half. She goes back to Kogelman, pass intercepted by Leno. Here's Leno, plays it out wide for Allison Liu. Liu tried to put it in the middle for Claire Tolliver, who's back in after a short break. Throw in here for the Eves. Here's Tolliver. Set into the box. Kretzmer got the foot on it. Leno, who loves to shoot from that spot, but it's taken off of her foot there by Zoe Stablarek. Eves get it back. Tolliver into the box. Finnegan to defend. Lori there helping as well. Tolliver tries to center it, but Stablarek was there. Here's Williams, had it taken off her foot by Maria Chapman. Throw in coming up for Connecticut College. Just over a minute into the first overtime session here in the NESCAC quarterfinals. Here's Leno. Drops it back for Sarah Kelly. Here's Nordhoff, has it taken away there by Lori. But out of bounds, throw in for Williams. Tolliver with the quick touch to Nordhoff, but broken up there by Finnegan. Now Lori battles Nordhoff. It goes out of bounds, last touch by the Camels. A throw in coming up for Williams. Here's Tolliver. Tolliver with space, lets one go and sails it high and wide. Goal kick coming up for Connecticut College. As we played just a little over two minutes of the first overtime here in Williamstown. As we said, Middlebury has jumped out to a one nothing lead in their match. Still no score, Hamilton and Amherst and Bowden and Tufts at last check. We'll go back and take another look at it here while we have an injury timeout. Still nothing, nothing, Hamilton and Amherst. Still nothing, nothing, 
Bowden and Tufts, and still one nothing Middlebury. Halftime at Wesley and Middlebury. Second half just underway, Bowden and Tufts. Still halftime at Hamilton and Amherst. Over at Amherst. So we get ready to start things here in the first overtime. 7.52 to go after the injury timeout. Tied at two. And a foul there on a push call. So a free kick coming up for Connecticut College. Looks like it'll be Kogelman who will restart it here for the Camels. Plays it ahead for Laurie, who lost this one in the direction of Johnson. Johnson trying to create some space, able to beat a couple of defenders, has some room, puts it in on Taylor, and she goes down and handles it. Taylor punts it out to midfield. Stablarek got a foot on it. Here's Lynch. Lynch plays it through to Tolliver. Off her line comes Pelletier, and she'll collect it. Under seven minutes to play in this first overtime. The men's teams starting to arrive on the scene over across. I'll be heading over for NESCAC men's quarterfinal action in a bit. Here's a Regbulum. Leno challenged there by Kat Norton, who was responsible for equalizing this one early in the second half. Played out wide. Kelly races onto it. Norton seems to be, she left the game for quite a period of time and seems to be not quite 100%. Here's Kelly. She'll survey, now send it in the direction of Tolliver. Tolliver. Has it knocked away out of bounds? It'll be a throw in coming up for Williams. Six minutes to play in the first overtime. Golden goal will win it for either side and advance them to the semifinals. Here's Tolliver. Tolliver drops it back for Erica Jung. Wide for Pearson. Back for Chapman. Eves will regroup. Here's a Regbulum. Wanted to play it out wide, but the intercept by Johnson. Counterattack chance coming up for the Camels. Johnson has Williams with her and also Norton. Johnson brings it back, lets it go, and Chelsea Taylor able to put it up over the top. Johnson had a notion to try to end it right there, but Taylor came up big. It'll be a corner kick for the Camels. Johnson and Norton, a dangerous combination. Laurie is going to go off. And coming on defensively for the Camels is Alyssa Kogelman. So Sarah Kogelman, Alyssa Kogelman, both back there defensively. Corner kick coming up here for Connecticut College. Lofted into the center of the box. And Claire Williams tried to get a piece of it and put it up over the top. It was Sarah Kogelman who went up to take the corner. The goal kick here for Chelsea Taylor with just under four and a half to play in this overtime session. Nice job there by Stablarek but it ends up on the foot of Jung. Now Claire Williams plays it out wide for Stablarek. Norton with a touch toward the top of the box. Kretzmer is in for Connecticut College. Johnson has it taken away there by the always aggressive Sarah Kelly. Ball played out wide. Johnson tries to run onto it. Kelly clears it out toward midfield. Connecticut College getting the better part of play these last couple minutes of overtime. Jung drops it back for a Regblum. Ahead for Emma Lynch, who's been a huge part of this attack today for the East. Sarah Kogelman got the head on it there for Stablarek. And Pearson got her feet tangled up with Stablarek, and it's going to be a free kick coming up. 
for Connecticut College as we approach three minutes to go in overtime. Sarah Kogelman will strike it for Connecticut College with the left leg there down toward the top of the box. Jung got the header on it. Here's Sarah Kelly. Challenged by Johnson. It goes out of bounds off. Johnson for a throw in. He's looking to attack. Here's Lynch. Lynch down the middle of the field. Plays it ahead for Tolliver. Tolliver trying to beat a defender. Creates some space. Going to let one go. And the save by Pelletier again. Pelletier has been outstanding. 27th shot for Williams. 17 saves for Katie Pelletier. And really, both the goals she gave up really were one was a shot right in front which was very difficult and the other one was just a perfect shot other than that she's been brilliant today in goal for the camels substitutions coming on here Tolliver will go off Lou will go off Gervin in and Georgia Lord back on for Williams Eves will throw it in. Here's Gervin. Drops it back for Chapman. Now Lynch. Lynch with a nifty move to create some space, but it's broken up there by Megan Dillon. Here comes Dillon for the Camels. Finds Kretzmer. Has it taken away, though, by Leno. Leno leads the counterattack opportunity for the East. Puts it down the middle, but no one there. But the Connecticut College defense with a minute to play in overtime. Here's Johnson. Johnson with Kelly giving chase. Tries to fend her off. Johnson still going. Wanted to find Norton, but a little bit behind her. Here's Kretzmer. Kretzmer is going to lob one in. It's going to bounce in front there, as you see. And handled by Chelsea Taylor with 40 seconds to play in overtime. Here's Leno. Leno's going to play this one down the middle. Lord waits for it. Helps her stay onside. Lord looks to center it. Oh, and an own goal, and Williams have won it. <laughs> Ball deflects off a defender for Connecticut College, and the Eves have won it on the own goal. <laughs> That's going to be a rule the, the way that we do things here in the NESCAC. A team goal, I believe, is the way it goes down in the books. But Williams have survived here against number six, Connecticut College and it was just one of those things that sometimes happens and Williams will take the 3-2 win in overtime and it'll be ruled a team goal is the way it is ruled when uh, it usually is scored in NESCAT conference play and it comes with just seconds left in the first overtime and Williams will advance to the semifinals and of course the other game is just underway so they will not know who they will face but Williams will go through in dramatic fashion it looked like we were certainly destined for a second overtime period and just a fluky thing is the best way to describe it just took a bad hop off a defender and it got past Pelletier, and the Eves have won it 3-2. Recapping the scoring, the Eves took the 1-0 lead on a Georgia Lord goal with 33-38 to go in the half on a beautiful pass from Rain Condi. Less than five minutes later, it was Marielle McEnany with the equalizer as she blistered one on a direct kick from just outside the box to make it 1-1. The Eves came back just over seven minutes later as it was Victoria Leno on a direct kick with a great shot that beat Pelletier to the upper right hand corner that made it 2-1 Williams at the half but Kat Norton with a splendid shot from long range that got into the upper right hand corner tied it at 2-2 with 39-29 left in the match 
It was scoreless the rest of the way from that point on and was still scoreless with 26 seconds left in overtime when a ball deflected in off a Connecticut College defender into the upper corner and Williams survives the upset bid by Connecticut College comes away with the 3-2 win on the team goal at the end is how to be scored in the final seconds. You can see the clock showing 26 seconds up there or we can see it off to our right but a uh, huge win for Williams and a tremendous effort by Connecticut College. Right now they are being congratulated by their fans and it was just an amazing effort today by the Camels and well-deserved accolades from their fans. Uh, over to our right, now the East over to our left, uh, getting congratulations from their fans as well. Two great soccer teams, two great institutions. It was a brilliant match and uh, both teams uh, outstanding today. And uh, somebody had to advance. That's um, the only way to put it. It's going to be Williams will advance to the semifinals, but a tremendous effort by the Camels of Connecticut College today. That's going to wrap it up here from Cole Field as I get ready to head straight across to bring Bates and Williams men's action your way in the NESCAT quarterfinals. Uh, Connecticut College goes to 10-5-1, Williams 9-4-2, and, and they'll be off to the NESCAT semifinals next weekend. So our final score in overtime, Williams with the team goal wins it over Connecticut College 3-2, and congratulations to both teams on a tremendous match. That's going to do it for my partner here, my producer and cameraman, Martin Fillion. I'm Keith Harrington saying so long from Williamstown. Williams wins it 3-2. This has been the NESCAC Women's Quarterfinals on the Northeast Sports Network.